Uh, here we are back with episode three of Will of Sness. Uh, the game that we uh, drew this week was uh, Putty, or Super Putty, however you want to call it. Classic Super Nintendo game, you got to put Super in front I'll of it. I'll say it's right? Super Putty. So, uh, I've never heard of the game, have you, Josh? No, I have not. And uh, I'd say there's pretty good reason. You know, sometimes you forget about games. I can wholeheartedly say i never heard of this game. I never played this game. Uh, kind of give you a quick rundown. The plot of the game is uh, Putty Moon. You're, you're a piece of putty in this game, I guess, is uh, to start off. Yeah, you're, you're a little blue ball. Yeah, you look like a little blob. It says, uh, Putty Moon, the place where Putty lives has been taken over by an evil wizard named Dazzle Days. Dazzle Days planned to capture the putties and ship them to Earth as gum. To save his friends and oust the evil wizard, Billy Putty enlists the help of some robots bots to build a skyscraper that will reach up the Putty Moon. For one, he has a name. He does have a name. Yeah, I would think Putty would be named Putty, but... Yeah, yeah. But his name's Billy Putty, so would that be like calling you Josh Human? Like, why is his putty, that's what he is. Why is that his last name? Yeah, I mean... That, so that would be George Human. Yeah, or, George, or Luna Dog, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't understand it, but... Uh, Spaz Dragon. But, you know, maybe everything works a little different on Putty Moon, you know? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, basically, this game, it's kind of like a platformer, but it is uh, uh, vertical. You travel vertical up a map more than you do side to side. Uh, very similar to what you would expect, like uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 on them levels that you climb. Uh, maybe even some of the early Metroid games uh, going up and down. Uh, basic controls is uh, you can uh, move left and right. You've got options to inflate, absorb, flatten, punch, or jump. And uh, there's also a slot in there, I guess is what you would call it. Uh, and that's how you either get around or defeat enemies as you travel through the stage. So, uh, just as it says, you have these bots that Billy Putty is trying to go through and rescue. Uh, you know, and once you rescue the X number, it's, it's I think, between three and five, depending on the level, uh, you'll go to the next level. So there's like each, I guess you would call stage has three levels to it from what I've seen. And, uh... So that's pretty much uh, from, you know, the start to finish the game. That's it. It's just different levels. You're traveling vertical and horizontal, picking up these putties and taking them basically to a spaceship and saving them. Uh, did I miss anything there, Josh? Uh, I mean, that's pretty much the the gameplay itself. Yeah, no, that that is 100% the gameplay is doing all that, uh, going up and down the levels. Like I said it's very... To me, it was very arcadish. Well, and that brings in that this game was originally made uh, for the Amiga in 92, uh, and then it came out in 93 on the SNES. So, uh, to me, this would have been an early game for the Super Nintendo. That's what, if, if I didn't know what year, that's what I would think it was an early game. I was kind of shocked to see that it was actually a 1993 game. Uh, when it came over, but uh, it is definitely an Amiga game. It has the Amiga feel to it. Uh, I don't really know. There's a whole lot more to it than that. Uh, but yeah, once again, you're just moving as putty up and down, and uh, once you uh, finish one of the stages, it's got three levels. It takes you to a screen. Uh, you know, basically gives you your high score and all that good jazz, and then you move on to the other one. Uh, I will say I am amazed to know that he has a name. That was That's kind of entertaining a little bit, but I'm more on the fact that he's putty. Uh, that's it. And as far as the whole, like, I guess the plot to it is, you would never know that it's about gum. Well, it is also uh, one of the classic Super Nintendo games that doesn't necessarily tell you the story while you play it. I guess you just read the back of the box. Uh, yeah. And, and fair enough, that's how most of them, or a lot of them are, is you read the back of the box and then you use your own uh, uh, imagination to it, you know. Try, try to add the flair to it. Yeah, and uh, uh, <laughs> to, to go in there, it does mention uh, Dazzle Days. He is the wizard that's trying to capture the putty. There is also uh, uh, another animal. What is his name here? I don't know, but this is the sound he makes. It's <laughs> stupid cat. 
it is a uh, dweezil the cat uh uh what the hell this cat has to do with anything is beyond me i never he, he, you you screw up you do something stupid you take too long in a level he bursts through the level and goes yeah i i just don't know i never really got a correlation between the wizard and the cat no absolutely not there was nothing there nor do i even know what the cat was screaming at you or he was doing yeah it was just meh well fair enough i guess uh Okay, so uh, overall, you know, uh, I think that covers the plot of the game, if that's what you want to call it. it like Josh said, it's kind of very arcadey feeling, so there ain't a whole lot of plot to it. Uh, I guess we're going to just jump on over <laughs> into what makes and breaks this game. Uh, I'd say let's jump into what breaks it first. Uh, uh, I've got no doubt I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> uh one thing that hit me is when you go to the main menu, uh, you know, you pick your levels. Uh, there's a two-player. Uh, the two-player would be cool if it was like couch co-op, but it's not. It's kind of like Mario where one person plays and the other person plays. So, you know, with it being an arcade style, I thought the two-player was pretty useless right off the bat. It was like, why do we even have a two-player? You should just have one player and the second player is going to be waiting anyway. So uh, why is it not just one player after the end of the game, the other person goes? Uh, maybe I'm wrong on that. I just thought having a two-player option was fairly useless uh, in this game anyway. It was. And even uh, if on the two-player option, you know, like I said, Mario. You do two-player, one's Mario and one's Luigi. You know, a different color, color scheme. That way you can do, uh, differentiate from them. On this one here, I don't even think it gave you a different color putty to play as. I'm pretty sure he stayed blue. Yeah, I didn't care enough. I mean, I bet if there was a color change, it was red. Kind of like Mario yeah. and Luigi yeah. color, but, you know, to each its own. And then the other thing that just stood out to me that uh, uh, you may disagree with me on is I thought the music sucked in this game. It was just over and over. It was like being at a damn carnival. Uh, I was not a fan of the music at all in this. The music did get really repetitive really quick, but I give them props on the music. It actually changed a little bit due to the level. Uh, yeah, it did with the level, but you know, by the time I would complete a level or whatnot, uh, I was pretty well over it. I was fine when I moved to the next level, having the, the TV literally turned down so low or muted that I didn't have to really listen to it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the music would have been fine. It was all kind of carnival sounding to me, which I'm okay with. But it was just like on, I, I felt like it was on like a six second loop over and over. Oh, and yeah. Over it, wasn't, it wasn't a long score yes. of music. It, it literally, like a couple of seconds, repeat. A couple of seconds, repeat. Yeah, I feel like if it was probably something that was like a 20 second music snippet that repeated, it wouldn't be so bad. But it was just like, I felt like I was going around a merry-go-round yeah. over and over. The same top music. Yeah. Uh, a good old-fashioned carousel. Like, what do you want to ride today? Do you want to do the horse, the hippo, the unicorn? And, and you know, some of the sound effects were kind of cool. But like I say, everything was pretty repetitive. Uh, with the style of this game, uh, I don't think the music and sound effects, just with it being kind of a repetitive game, what you're trying to accomplish, uh, picking up bots, going from point A to... Or, you know, taking them to a mothership or to the exit. Uh, a lot of the same, I mean, you were doing the same thing over and over. You were hearing a lot of the same sound effects. I wasn't necessarily a, a huge fan of it. No, sound effects, sound effects and music did get really repetitive. Wasn't, well, I said, it's definitely on the break it side of things. Uh, I guess starting out too, another thing I wasn't really a fan of is I wasn't really a fan of the health bar up top. Uh, I don't know how many times that uh, I would end up dying. It was just kind of like it was out of my way to, to look at. Uh, felt like it could have been a little bit easier. You know, there's a... I know it's an Amiga game, so I ain't really cutting on the graphics or anything, but uh, everything on your heads-up display was really up top. And, you know, the whole screen was pretty crowded at any time. But uh, when... I would look up, literally the only thing I could really go to is to see, it would tell you at the start of a level how many putties were out or how many you rescued. So I would look up there, or uh, I guess bots, not putties. Uh, I would look up there and see how many bots, but trying to uh, continue to look up there at my health constantly, I wasn't a big fan of that. No. Uh, that might be a little nitpicky on me. No, uh, that, like I said, the, the whole thing was really crowded. You were constantly having to avoid damage which was either by random 
enemies or even some of them shot at you so you had to dodge it so you can't like if you looked up you were guaranteed to get hit and that was another thing in this game is you had to take damage yeah that was it that i guess that's really there with it is you're absolutely right if somebody told me that uh they could do a perfect uh, run a perfect run no I, damage I, i'm not gonna say that you couldn't do it but i just be like man you're spending way too much time on this game to be able to do this you have a useless talent that no one really appreciates that is exactly it as like you could have probably like cured the world of some ailment in the time it spent you to do that so to have to keep track with that health bar and constantly taking damage uh uh i felt that that was a little lacking uh, my biggest thing about the HUD, and th this wasn't really the HUD, this was a part of it. You had magic, apparently. And, like, I, I'm i assuming the magic was, like, a special move, like a special ability. The only other special ability you had was inflate. And I don't think that consumed magic. Or if it did, it was very minuscule to the point. Yeah, by the time I would accumulate any magic, and this may be... Uh... I don't know if it's necessarily a uh, testament to the game. Is I didn't really want to mess with it because uh, I'd already by the time I had any magic, I was already three quarters of the way through the level. Yeah, it's like why do I want to try to learn a new skill? Like literally, I've just got the toughest bots. So I'm just going back and you know, finishing the yeah. level. Yeah, clean it up. Uh, probably uh, one one thing that uh, is kind of crazy in here is. Uh, there was a lot of items in here that I had no idea what the hell that did. Oh, yeah, no, I, I just collected them. I've got no clue what they done. Some gave you health, some gave you magic. A lot of them gave you points. Yeah, I mean, you had a, a clock, hot dogs, false teeth, orbs with numbers, which they were pretty self-explanatory. It was for points. Yeah, the orbs uh, with numbers were really easy. It was either like a kiwi or a melon, the, a fruit. Health would work on that one. And, and then you did have Uncle Ted playing an organ that pretty much was like the super power up of everything. But like, what the hell does false teeth do for putty? Who, uh, who the fuck's Uncle Ted? Well, I don't know. I didn't know <laughs> Uncle Ted was a human playing an organ. Uh, is he that is is he Billy Putty's uncle? I don't know. Is he Dazzle Days' ultimate enemy? Is that how you defeat a wizard? You I, learn to play an organ? I don't know. But uh there was I mean, a, okay now organs were played during that really crappy movie when Mars Attacks and it defeated the aliens. Made never, their head, made their heads explode. I never watched Mars Attack. Are you what? I've never watched it. Uh, well, and with that going in there, the you know I, I didn't like that. I didn't know what all the items did. So sometimes I felt like I would be trying to scoot or hop across a level uh, to get a useless item. Yeah, to get an item that really gave me you no. Know, it gave me points. I didn't give a crap about points in this game. Uh, so I was uh, not a big fan of that at all. Uh, at the same time, uh, there. <laughs> I, I guess I'll save this for the. The make it. I've, I do have a list of enemies that you fight in this game that is equally as puzzling as the power They ups. are, but they, again, I, I agree with you. That's on the make it side. It made it more entertaining for me. Uh, there was a couple of things that I really didn't like, and we're kind of going to get down to the, the nuts and bolts of these. Uh, I guess this goes hand in hand. I didn't like having to backtrack through a lot of these levels. So, uh, you know, I mean, basically the, the whole point of the game is you're starting at the, the bottom left for the most part. And uh, you typically in the top right, not necessarily in all stages, but just in this instance, you're moving your way through this level. So that's fine. Uh, there it might be four bots, three bots. So Three, four, five, depending on the level. No, and, and there's one that's like kind of an obvious one when you start. So the whole time you're moving through this level, you're looking at other bots, trying to figure out where they're at so you can rescue them. They have like a hamburger-shaped head, and yeah. they bounce. Yeah, they basically look like a Big Mac with a plunger on the bottom of them. Yep. But as you would take these guys up and take them to the UFO, then you would have to basically backtrack through the level to pick up the other one. And then you would take him to the UFO. And then you would backtrack again. And so, to me, it felt like it led to a lot of uh, repetitive gameplay. So, I felt like, I mean, and I get it. This is an Amiga game. Uh, probably a little limited on what they could do. 
but I found the game to be really repetitive over and over. I did not like having to backtrack. That's one of my things, not just in this game, in, in most games, I don't like having to backtrack. Yeah. If I backtrack, I want it to be something like in a, one of the Zelda's Final Fantasies or the RPGs where something's changed. You, so you when move, I backtrack... You move a little farther into that area. You're backtracking the game to move the story on. Yes. This was not how this no. was. It was, uh, you know, basically... Uh, it, it kind of was like, for all intents and purposes, like basically playing Donkey Kong just with the screen being like maybe twice the size of Donkey Kong. And you were just basically running the same level back and forth. And uh, I thought that to me was one of the big things. Uh, the next few things is like some of the bigger things for me. But that was one of the biggest turnoffs to this game for me was all the backtracking. And just even though I played the game for 30 minutes, it felt like, I'd played it for an hour. So, like, by the time I put a couple hours in on this game, I was thoroughly burnt out because I just felt like I was doing the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, and uh, the backtracking, I mean, don't get me wrong. I In some games, I understand it. In this game, like I said, it, to me, it was more of an arcade feel. So, the backtracking was pretty much more on the whole thing of getting your stuff and going. My biggest downfall is I'm if you have nothing else to say about that trick, I want to go ahead and move along with yeah, this. Go ahead. Is uh the whole thing of it is you can only carry one robot at a time. That irritated me way more than it probably should have. Yeah, I mean I guess it would have made the game super easy. It would have cut out on the repetitive gameplay, but I guess it would have probably made the game extremely short if you could have picked them all up in one go. I and I get that. I do get that. But that that's one of the things that irritated me the most is you had to pick up you can only pick up one robot at a time. So I made it a habit to go all the way through the match first and get cause your your first robot you find is normally the easiest. It's normally the last one that you find that's in the worst spot possible. And that's the one I normally went with first. I normally went to the very end, grabbed him and worked my way back. Yeah, and that was one thing it was like... Because of the jumping. The jumping was the thing that irritated me the most about the game. Well, the controls in general was pretty... They were pretty sluggish. Uh, not the worst controls. Uh, I, I feel like uh, there were some of the parts of this game that moved pretty fluid. Like, you know, sliding side to side and all that. But that jumping... Was cool. Jumping definitely did have a lag to it. Uh, now, to me, I mean... There's a couple ways you could play the game. I was a jumper, and it you had to plan on the lag. Like, even though it was aggravating, I did feel like I kind of got used to it. But I feel like the jumping was the most janky part of the, all of the controls. Like, some of the controls weren't that bad. Uh, you know, I mean, borderline okay. But the jumping was definitely a bad spot. It, it, it was a black eye for this game. It was like, I don't know why of all the things the jumping mechanic was more broken than anything else because i mean you know for god's sake your putty can throw his arm out there and punch somebody and it feels okay but then when you go try to jump then you're just like dear god it's like steering a spaceship you know yeah yeah and that that was the biggest thing that's one of the reasons why i always went to the end first because that's where you have to do all your jumping and it was so hard to fine tune that jump on certain spots that I went through there and done that. And the punching and all that, it worked. My downfall with the punching though, is your punch was like two pixels. Like your dude can stretch halfway across the screen and your punch is literally just like, uh, huh. that irritated me way more than it should, honestly. That, that was my, probably the biggest downfall for me. Okay, so I've got two things left. And uh, one of the things is I did feel that this game was pretty cheap. Uh, in general, when you started the game, you better be ready to move. You better be ready to, to make haste. Because as soon as it starts, if you let your guy sit there for three seconds before you start, you're going to take damage. Because there's stuff falling off the top of the screen. So I felt like there was some kind of cheap hits they were taking out on you, you know. And... and so, like I say, the game's designed to take damage. Uh, there's no doubt on that. But, you know, sometimes I'm 
walking in from the other room from going to the bathroom maybe i'm opening a drink and i look up and i'm like holy crap i'm already taking damage and and i, I wasn't a fan of that and probably one of the things i hated the worst out of all the cheap damage was the spikes there was these random spikes in this game <laughs> and it would just it was instant death it wasn't hey let me take half your health hey as long as you're on them you're taking damage no it was instant death and so there's so many times in this game that you're actually coming down from so so once you're traveling up through the level the bottom of the screen scrolling up so when i deliver a putty to the ufo robot uh, that is tr uh, a bot uh, <laughs> i'm just trying to get back down as quick as i mean i don't even care if it would have started me back at the start to work my way up so i'm like i just want to get down off this uh map as quick as possible to the next bot and uh when you did that, I would typically go full Leroy Jenkins and jump off of uh, like the top of this, and just and then in, inevitably I'd fall on a freaking spike, death. And I'm like, come on, man! Like you know what I'm trying to do? Why are you gonna rob me like this? Take half my health. Uh, and and like I say, with it being a game, I understand that it's gonna give me the damage. I don't like having to start with my head on a swivel because I'm just gonna get murdered if I take 10 seconds after I start the level to really get going. And then I hated that these spikes was just, I felt like it, as tough as this game was, as far as the, uh, the damage it's going to deal to me, uh, you know, you know, you're going to hurt my putty. I don't need you to just instantly kill me with spikes. Like, uh, I'm probably going to die anyway. Why are you going to make it any easier on me? This isn't fun. It's more fun when I'm getting killed moving through a level than some kind of cheap Spock just killing me. See, I was fine with the Spocks because Mega Man is one of my all-time favorite video games. And in Mega Man, it teaches you Spots means instant death. Like, at no point in this entire game did I ever think that I was going to survive for taking a spike. Well, I never planned on jumping on a spike. It was just, I was jumping blindly off these ledges that were like two or three stories high. So by the time my putty, it, well, like, I would like it to have like a good splat sound effect. And I was hoping to hit the ground and then keep moving. I would fall on a spike. So it wasn't like I ever seen a spike when I was like, hey, I'm going to see what this does. It was just more or less, it's like, I'm trying to get it back to the original part of this level that I'm backtracking through as quick as possible and somewhere along the way I found one of the three spots in this damn <laughs> level. But yeah, I, I do get you on that. Like I said, it, that was the whole repetitiveness of it is you wanted to get down to the bottom as fast as possible. So yeah, you've done that. And if you actually look, I think some of the spots were placed for you not to do that. Well, I did make notes of it as I was traveling through the level. It's like, here's these bastard spikes that are going to kill me. But you know what happened? I still fell on them. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I guess that, that might be more on me. But there was some cheap hits in there, I did think. And, there was. Uh, and it, really, the, the last thing that I got that was, uh, it was a big deal breaker on this one, too, is, you know, there's always, uh, you know, the saying, you can say more with less. I felt like they could have did this because there was so much going on in the screen. Like literally every inch of the screen, they felt like they either had to put a put a put a bot, a power up, an, an enemy, enemy stuff uh, moving. Yes, the platforms and everything. Was a, it was definitely cluttered. There was a lot of clutter. That was it. Cluttered is the word for it. So, and that kind of goes in when you're like, hey, you know, you didn't like the health bar. Why couldn't you read a health bar? Well, you couldn't really take your eye off the screen because I mean. It, there was a lot of action, which is a good thing. Yeah, but, there was a lot of action. But and again, a lot man. of clutter. Like I said, as like I said, I never looked at the health bar. I didn't care about my health. I didn't care about the magic. I just knew I had to get from point A to point B. Well, actually, it'd be point C and collecting point B's on the way. Yeah, and and I guess you know just to go into some of the stuff when you're like, what do you mean this screen is uh, cluttered? This isn't even all of the, the all of them. This is just like some stuff I wrote down. But some of the stuff that you were fighting or were going through in this level were turkeys in top hats, uh, robots that pretty much walked out and opened up their coat like they were flashing you, uh, fat bouncing ninjas, soldiers, teddy bears, uh, enemies that turned into babies, spiders, cuckoo birds, a uh, bee that drops bombs, the sausage. Uh, a thing that looks like a trog, 
uh, jetpack samurais, a dude in a Viking hat, a hot dog running around with a damn fork stuck in him, a witch, uh, a rabbit, a duck in a race car, a light bulb, griffins, a half naked dude meditating, uh, uh, egg. It, it was like a you. This egg hatched and turned into a sumo wrestler of all things. There was trains, the damn cat and a UFO, uh, and moss. And it was just like this. These were all throughout the game, but there was probably half of these in each level. Yeah. So when you're sitting there thinking, "Hey, why can't you focus on uh, the heads-up display? Why are you saying it's cluttered?" And it's like because there's literally 76 different enemies. And I don't know if I'm more distracted by a hot dog running around with the fork stuck in him, which is still kind of fun, or an egg that hatches into a sumo. And then, then out of nowhere, the cat pops up and goes, Meh! I swear the cat reminded me of the game Bubsy. Uh, Love the game Bubsy. Uh, it was like Bubsy's crack-headed brother. Was, I mean, it was just like he was ripping through the screen and then laughing at you. Uh, or trying to say something that, and I, and I do not understand the whole purpose yeah, of right. the cat. He was just there to distract you. He was just there to make the clutter more cluttering and make you go what? So even though I did enjoy having all these enemies, but it was just like you don't have to put all these guys in one level. It seems like I mean there was a lot of clutters, yeah. a super super duper amount of clutter. Yeah, and, and just transitioning over to the make it side for me is I. Like I said, the enemies, there were so many of them, but some of them were kind of fun. Ninja or uh, Astronaut Samurai. That's pretty cool. That's pretty funny. I did like him. Well, what's funny is uh, after we drew the game, we actually played a game of it here, and Josh took the first go of it, and he hopped right up in this astronaut uh, or samurai. Jetpack Samurai. He just goes right by him, no thing. I hop on there. He's trying to cut me with that damn sword. <laughs> he and I'm like, what is the mechanic? Why did you not <laughs> attack him? And you attacked me, which is is fun. But like I say, that was kind of goes back to like even when you get to the end of the level and you're going to the UFO and the bee that drops bombs jumps out. I was like, it was kind of a cheap tactic to give you damage. It, it was, was like yeah. I don't need this. Yeah. Like, but you know that that's it. You know, I mean, uh, the clutter was really bad uh, to me. It was just you know my worst things I think was uh, a lot of clutter. Uh, repetitive gameplay and uh, it was just kind of hard to kind of focus on what you were actually trying to accomplish from level to level but that's all I've got that broke the game for me Josh is there anything that you want to add no everything I've said previously is definitely what broke the game for me uh, so what made the game uh, and, and there was some good stuff with this game I'm not gonna lie uh, it's original game style uh, I don't know that I've played a game that's necessarily like it. There's, uh, you know, you can say it's similar just in the fact of it, you know, moves up and down instead of a traditional side to side. And, you know, I like an original game. So, so that is one thing is, uh, you know, you turn the game on and you're just like, whoa, what have I got to do? You know, uh, like, you know, that this isn't like a game that you've ever played from the moment you enter the first screen of gameplay. And, and then that kind of goes into the next thing I got is, uh, uh, you know, there's several ways to play each level. You know, when you go to play the level, you're trying to get your uh, bots to the uh, uh, UFO. But I was more of a jumper. If you didn't like jumping and you were good at sliding and doing some of the punching and stuff, you could absolutely do that. So I feel like that if you watch three or four people play the same level, uh there was different routes that you could take on each level and there was different game styles you could take. So I think you could probably realistically have four people playing the same level and they could all play it a different way. So, you know, that was kind of cool. If you weren't good at one aspect of it, of the jumping, then it wasn't like your game was over because you couldn't jump with the lag controls. Uh, you could go a different way. And that was really cool. I, th I thought that was a, a good thing to do. Yeah, I was more of a slider puncher. I fought the enemies, and then I definitely, well, not slide. I call it stretched, because you stretch the putty out, and he connect to the other side and get sucked into it. And that's how I played the game. I, the jumping only affected whenever you had to land on platforms, preferably moving platforms, is where I hated it. 
that was the part that irritated me the most about it. And like I said, me stretching and fighting wasn't that hard. And the other thing I loved about it is, like I said, the whole vertical movement and everything. It reminded me of a classic arcade video game. And that's one of the things I loved about this game. That I do have marked down here. I love that it was an up and down game instead of a typical side scroller. If this was a side scroller, I don't think it would hold up very well. Uh, the game is kooky, you know, and I, it's made to be a kooky game. Like, it, it's uh, got a fun feel to it. I mean, you heard the story. Uh, they're trying to get back up to Putty Moon, I guess, by going up these, or they're going up building skyscrapers, whatever it is. The the story is ridiculous. They just don't want to be turned into gum. Yeah, the story is ridiculous, and the game is pretty ridiculous, too. So, but it has a fun feel. It's not taking itself serious. So I do like that it went up and down. If you tried to compete on a stage where it was side to side, I think this game would fall very flat. Uh, so I think it was very wise for them to make it up and down instead of side scrolling. And once again, the the game had that arcade feel. It was fun. Uh I mean, like I say, I just I can't get past a, a dude in a Viking hat or a robot trying to flash you. Uh, even though there was way too much clutter on the screen, the enemies themselves were ridiculous. Uh, like when you asked me, you know, what do you think about Super Putty? I'm gonna say about all the dang like hot dogs running around with forks in them. You know, like yeah, it, all the enemies. Like, none of it made sense. No, but the game didn't make a whole lot of sense either. So it it was hand in hand with each other. Yeah, and that's what made this game fun. It was, like I said, it was kooky, it was original. I really enjoyed that and everything. The uh, And moving it on, as I said, the arcade style, is I enjoyed that because I think, like, get a group of friends together, throw back a few beers or whatever, throw back a few bevs, and you're all like, hey, what's the high score? It can turn into a competitive style gameplay since you got to leave your initials on whatever you happen. And I love that. That's one of my biggest things about this game is I like being competitive on a game where it actually keeps track of how good you've done. I, in my opinion, I did feel that the score was uh, unnecessary uh, and the timer on that. So even though it didn't necessarily bother me, uh, if you would have said, hey, I beat your score in Super Putty, I would personally say I don't care. It's like I still won or whatever, you know. I it's mean, all about bragging rights, man. You play if you play Mario Party, your whole goal is to win and brag. You play Mario Kart, your whole thing is to win and brag. I feel like there is some pride to take upon Mario Kart. I'm not sure that I'm too proud that I'm the best at Super Putty. Uh, it's a random game to throw in to pick on your friends. So, and one thing that this game did do well is also is the objective was the same. So, like, even though it's a little confusing if you never played the game. And yet you, you hop on there and you you look and you're like, hey, oh, I got to take these bots to the UFO. It was the same in every level. So even though the levels did drastically change uh, from level to level, uh, you never had to wonder what is my objective. The objective was the same. It was it was pretty, uh, I ain't going to say it was cut and paste because there wasn't like a, you know, or clear, it wasn't a uh, tutorial that told you how to, accomplish this but once you realized how to rescue a bot and take it to the ufo you had the game licked as far as uh what you needed to do it in that part it was like you had a it's kind of like you had a 15 second loop of this is what you need to do to win the game and do it over and over and over and over so you could jump into one of the levels that uh, you had never played before, but you automatically know what to do. The bots look the same that you were rescuing. Your putty was the same. The only thing that changed was the crazy enemies you were playing and the stages that were crazy ambitious uh, that you were going up against. Uh, so I did think that you took a game that felt very arcade-ish and you made it easy to understand. Once you got the gist of it, you knew what you were going to be doing. Yeah, 100%. And that's, again, that's one of the big selling points for me, is that even though you knew the overall gist, you go up to a bot, you hold down, you absorb the bot, you go up to the UFO, each level brought in its own unique challenges, whether it being the different enemies that done different style attacks, or the environment of the level itself. And and then probably, even though I think it was a lot, the 
uh, one of the better uh, things and probably the last thing I have that makes it uh, was there was non-stop action. I, I complain because as soon as you start up, uh, uh, you're getting hit. But at the same time, you're not going to be bored. Like say, there's so much clutter in the screen. There's so many enemies that you're going against. Uh, there's so much happening. It's non-stop. And, and it does, like say, I guess go back to you know, whatever strategy that you use. I don't think there is a right strategy to use in the whole game. It's just uh, get your objective, get it done, get out. And uh, if you're looking, you're not going to play this game and be bored by any means. You might get aggravated, you might not like it, but from the moment you hit that start game, it's going to be flat out. That That is 100% accurate. Yeah, you definitely have to keep your head on a swivel. Like, if, like I said, the moment it starts, the game starts in earnest. There's no break. There's no nothing like that. So, and that's one of the things that, again, I still enjoyed about it is because even though it done that, that's how classic arcade games sort of start. And that, I, I can't get over it enough, is that's one of the biggest selling points for me is that this was like a classic arcade video game. It wasn't like 20 years ago, well, actually close to 30 years ago, if you went into, say, like a Chuck E. Cheese, a Mr. Gaddy's, you know, somewhere that had an arcade-style game, it wouldn't surprise me if this game was in there. I have marked down, it's funny that you say that, that uh, as an arcade game, I wouldn't say that this would be an arcade game. And I don't know that it was ever an arcade. But that's just the feel. Yeah, I, I've got no idea. I, but I don't think I'm it would be a cool arcade like at the mall. I've, I've got marked down that this would be an arcade game that's at Mr. Gaddy's or CeCe's Pizza. Uh, yeah. So it was one of them that it's not going to be the, the latest, you know, Terminator arcade game or nothing. It was just kind of like an old centipede top one that sat in the corner. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, rephrasing that, my previous statement is that Growing up poor, I didn't really get to go to like the Chunky Cheeses and all that oh, stuff. Oh, I agree. Often, and, and I can mess. So, with, I'll, I'll mess with CC's any day of the week. Exactly. CC's is one of the greatest places on the planet for me. <laughs> so, uh, even though I would say that if you're wanting a fine dining pizza experience, uh, CC's probably is not going to be the most gourmet pizza. Uh, definitely as, not. As <laughs> if you're going to play an arcade game at a CC's pizza, you're probably not going to get the latest and greatest one. You're probably going to get one that was ten years old. Yeah. A hundred percent agree with that. <laughs> so I don't have anything else that makes the game, Josh. Do you have anything you want to add? No, it, the only thing I got to add to it is that, again, I loved it. I enjoyed it. My kids hated it, but they played a little bit longer on this one because of the fact that you could type your score in. I was going to ask how the kids handled it. Uh, now, uh, to me, I think this is a, a decent game. I, I ain't going to venture into saying good. Now, mind you, we've uh, had three games. This is our third game. We've had Roger Clemens Baseball and Dragon View. Uh, it's definitely different. It has an Amiga feel. It, it is. We've got three drastically different uh, genres that we played. But, you know, uh, I wouldn't let somebody sit here and just dog cuss putty and uh, tell me no. how bad it is. No, I defend it. I defend it to a point right now, definitely. Uh, and, and also, like, the cover art, the one thing I did like was the cover art on the Super Nintendo box when I was looking it up for price. Uh, it looks weird. But when you play the game, you're like, that's I pretty get accurate. Yeah, yeah, I get it's it. pretty <laughs> accurate. Uh, a couple things, I guess. I didn't really have a whole lot of... Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of trivia, really, to go to this. But there is just a couple of... Uh, or I guess it, there wasn't a whole lot of fun facts. One, th there's just a couple things that I thought was really weird. Was you know typically each stage had uh, you know three levels to it that you had to beat, and then it, when you go enter your score, all the the bots were bouncing around at a place called Bob's Milk Bar. Yeah, which was weird. I have, and it was kind of like they were in outer space. I'm not sure. And Bob looked really depressed in this. Oh, too. Bob hated his life. So. I don't know. Do bots like milk? I, I don't know. I don't understand. I've never been to a milk bar. I'm that borderline lactose intolerant, so it kind of <laughs> grosses me out thinking about it because it's going to make me miserable. But I did find that was uh, very weird. And also, the way the game ended was very weird. Uh, literally, you had 
like a little room and you could see basically the wizard oh uh dazzle days dazzle days i'm guessing it was because i don't think i really seen dazzle days in the whole game until the uh, end yeah. it's the end so one thing that they did there's the uh whole thing and uh before we get into that real quick i want to just bring it up to the whole cover art thing it's the cover art you see the goddamn cat in the corner who's very small he wasn't small in the game. He took up almost the entire screen. Yeah, I mean, it was like he was busting through the screen. Yeah, and also with the with the milk bar thing, I think that's a play on that old uh, arcade game. I think it was called Taps, where you were a bartender serving root beer to all the patrons. Okay. I wonder if that was a playoff on that. I don't know. I don't understand why Bob had a milk bar. I don't know why it kind of seemed like he was in outer space. I don't know why he hated the bots or why bots like milk. Like bots say, are annoying. I mean, you are like a you're a Big Mac sitting on a plunger, bouncing up and down. That is what a bot looks like, pretty much to a T. Uh, maybe if it was like Bob's Burgers, uh, I could understand that. Not to get <laughs> no trademark going on, but like the milk was weird. And I mean, I mean, look, bots are always annoying. Look at how many games that are out there nowadays where people build bots. To run a game like, say, Fortnite, Call of Duty, Apex. Like, you get into a game and you automatically see people dropping like this nonstop. You know that's a bot. That's an AI help. So, so maybe it's an homage to a future like, hey, bots are going to ruin your life one day. I don't think that this game got that far ahead of itself. We oh. don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I'm pretty, uh, pretty sure it didn't. So uh, to go back to how the game ends is like, You've got Dazzle Days that's uh, the wizard, and he's kind of like down in this hole. I don't know if it's necessarily his bunker. Or it's like a prison cell. And all of a sudden, it kind of has him facing the camera, and you see the putty like stretch down. And then the next thing you know, there is one of the bots, uh, you know, just pops up. I guess the putty had released the bot in there. And Dazzle Days turns around, and the bot kind of has like this Terminator aspect where it's like lining up the shot, and Dazzle Days looks surprised, and then it basically it shoots Dazzle Days. Now, of course, it just shows like the, you know, the lock coming off the muzzle or however he's shooting. It just kind of gets bright, and then there is just a wizard hat with a hole through it. Now, you know, no blood, no nothing, you know, obviously, but, uh, and then the game was over, and that was really strange too. I agree. Because it, then it goes as like if the damn bots could shoot, how the hell were they not saving the damn self? My whole thing about I it, couldn't shoot as a putty. Yeah, they've no. got better. They're more equipped. No, my whole thing is this. They like said Dazzle Days was down in a hole. They like said it looked. It didn't look like a bunker. It looked more like a prison cell to me. How did he get to Putty Moon being a prisoner? I don't know. I felt like it was probably his lair, but once again, there wasn't a whole lot going on in that hole. Okay, and, and, and you know who has layers? Evil people have layers. The villains have layers, and I understand that. That's the whole cliche genre stipulation to an evil person, is you gotta have a layer. Dr. Evil had a layer inside of a volcano with sharks with laser beams with on their laser, laser beams. beams. <laughs> so... Well, I think that's really, uh, other than uh, as I was trying to look up fun facts, there, I'm not going to say there's a cult following, but there is way more websites dedicated to the Super Putty. And the Putty series, there's uh, uh, sequels. I think there was actually a game. Released. There's a sequel? I think there's a game. Now, I don't think the sequel came out of Super Nintendo. Uh, it was actually, uh, uh, they did release actually on Super Nintendo, but only in the PAL regions. It was called Putty Squad. Uh, I do think there was a Super Putty game that was released for the PSP or the PS Vita uh, that I'd never heard of as well. Uh, I think that was actually some of the Putty fans uh, regard that one pretty high. But yeah, there's uh, well, there's websites with way more information than you would ever want to know. Oh, of all the lore and everything. Yes. Like, oh no, no, I'm good. But I do. I, I will say this that. I've already made it in my mind. Even though this is game number three in our list, 
there's going to be a cult following for a lot of these style games. I have a major feeling that I'm not going to make a lot of people happy. Okay, so let's get down to what do you think this game is worth, Josh? Uh, a loose copy of this cart, how much do you... How much do you think this sells for? I've got once again I got price charting and eBay prices and they're pretty close for the most part. A uh, loose copy of Super Putty. Loose copy of Super Putty. I would venture I I'd have to venture and say a solid four bucks. Solid four. Uh you're a little low on it. Uh this isn't one of the crazy ones that people love and they're gonna spend a hundred dollars on, but uh Price charting had it at nine ninety nine. I looked at some eBay solds. Uh, the average with shipping and all that was about eleven ninety nine. So uh, I, I feel fair to say, hey, ten dollars, you're gonna get you a loose card of Super Putty, and I'm probably not too upset with that. You know, it's a ten dollar Super Nintendo game. Uh, I'd say it's probably properly rated. You bought Roger Clemens. I did buy Roger Clemens, uh, and. <laughs> I would. I bought Roger Clemens for ten dollars. I would. I bought a complete Roger Clemens for ten dollars, except for the poster. So, that is true. You did get a complete for ten dollars. If I could buy this complete for ten dollars, I would do it in a heartbeat. But what do you think a complete version of this? Uh, you know, decent box, etc. What What do you think that's with right? it? With the loose being ten, I would say this is probably about maybe a thirty-five to forty range. Uh, there's a little bit more variance from what I've seen on eBay than price charting. Price charting had a complete copy at $57.76. Okay. I've seen some at eBay that people had listed, I guess, at $75, but none had sold. So I would say that probably $57 is going to be inaccurate because there was a couple that were at $75, but... I didn't see any sold listing, so obviously nobody liked Super Putty enough to pay seventy five. Yeah, I mean, I do feel that if you offered me this game at like thirty dollars complete, I'd probably buy it for that just because it's kind of fun, good cover art. Uh, so uh, I will tell you that there was no new ones that I seen listed on eBay when I looked, or any that had sold over the past uh, uh, ninety days. So I have to go with price charting. Do you know what a new crisp sealed copy of Super Putty, according to price charting, goes for? Well, with the whole fact of a used copy in good condition being around 50 and eBay being 75, I mean, that's a pretty severe variance. New copy, crisp, crisp 100. A hundo. You're, you're low. You want to take another guess? I'm low. You are way low. When I say way, we're way, not... okay. I'm about to say spe specify way low for me for a I'm just bit. gonna say you're pretty low. I ain't gonna pretty say pretty low. Okay. So way low doesn't mean like 200 or something like that. So okay. So pretty low. I would have to venture 127. Okay, we'll have to we'll have to get a definition of uh, how hot or cold you are because. Uh, when you said two hundred dollars, you were closer than one twenty-seven. Okay, so that's way low to me. Well, I, I don't want to say that you're way low, and you think this is like a five hundred sealed dollar sealed game. Oh no, no. I, okay, there's only like two games I think about that in Nintendo, and Super Putty is not one of them. I, I've seen what, according to what price charting had, which like I say, there's few sold, so uh, I guess it's really what what somebody wants to spend on. I did see a, they were saying a new copy should go for about one hundred and eighty-five dollars. Which, I guess there's... Again, I, the cult following. I, I, I can see that. I, I, anything sealed at this age is going to be expensive. Uh, uh, $9 for a loose cart. I think that $57 for a complete cartridge probably stretches a little bit. There's a pretty big variance there. And, like uh, said, and the eBay throws it up to 75 I think that's a bit extreme. That's a big margin. But then you, when you go, I, I do feel like, even though I feel like the loose cartridge at $10 is probably worth $10 to me, uh, getting to new at 185 it's like, yeah, uh, that's... That's a, a bit much. So I guess at the end of the day, Josh, if I had Super Putty, a cartridge of it, and I said I would give you the Super Putty or I'll give you $5 cash, which would you take? Honestly, on this one, I'm taking the cart because I actually enjoyed the game. I'll take the cartridge. I think I would, too. And I can go ahead and say that uh, I've never heard of the game. I've never necessarily seen the game. 
and yeah, and and so that uh, at the at the end of the day, for a game I haven't really seen or heard of, I pay ten dollars on it. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I like I say I paid ten dollars on uh, uh, lesser games. So uh, I guess that's going to go into the crossing. So now you know that we've got to go uh, to the Mount Rushmore of ranking this game. So with this being the uh, third game, uh, we end up saying that our previous one was I had the ranking as Dragon View number one and Roger Clemens number two. You had Roger Clemens number one, which is a bold take. And I, 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 I stood by that. I think I could win a game in Roger Clemens before I could figure out how to win Dragon View. <laughs> that is true, but I do feel like I'm more interested in trying to win Dragon View than I am Roger Clemens. Uh, but either way, apples and oranges, uh, I'm right, you're wrong, however you want to say it. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Roger Clemens being number one and Dragon View being number two. Uh, regardless, Super Putty is going to be on your Mount Rushmore. It is. So... Would you rank that as number one, two, or the third game? Hundred percent, number one. Super. Pu- I enjoyed this more than both those other games. So you, your your favorite Super Nintendo games in order are Super Putty, Roger Clemens, and Dragon View. That's the only three we played, and that I stick correct. with it. Okay, well, uh, if you wanted to tell me that Super Putty is better than Roger Clemens, I hundred percent agree. Uh, but I do put Dragon View uh, at a little bit farther up the list as number one. I've got Roger Clemens as number two. Without a doubt, Super Putty comes in above Roger Clemens, but less than Dragon View. So, uh, so like say, uh, I say, I go Ro- or Dragon View, Super Putty, and then Roger Clemens. Uh, there's, there's no doubt that uh, Super Putty is... The one thing we can agree, I guess, is Super Putty is definitely better than Roger Clemens. It's just the debate of whether Roger Clemens is better than Dragon View. Yeah, yeah. And I already accepted fate that I pissed off a lot of cult following people about Dragon View on that one. But again, it just boils down to the fact that I think I could have a winning game over Dragon View before I could figure out how to beat Dragon View. And Super Putty just for the competitive nature of it, is I can see this as a party-style game where you can get a couple of friends together and see who could outbeat somebody else. That's that, that's my competitive nature coming out on that one. I'll just say that I can 100% expect that nobody would say these are top three games. But Oh, no, no. no. As... Uh, uh, I, th- I think probably realistically, I could see Dragon View being in the... You know, I mean, we're talking like 700-plus games... Uh, I see, you know, just time taking a hot take. I see Roger Clemens probably coming in at the 650 to 700 range for me uh, I, I on go, the bottom tier. I, I would go a little higher than that just because I had more fun with Roger Clemens as the nicknames. And and for every game we play like Super Putty that is uh, a game we've not heard of and it was okay, there's going to be some that aren't going to be okay. Oh, yeah. There's going to be absolute garbage. I feel like Super Putty's probably going to fall right smack dab in the middle if I had to take a guess. Uh, uh, yeah. if, you, if you told me it's in the three to 400 range, uh, I would say that's right. And Dragon View, I think it's going to be a... You know, it, it's hard to take a shot at it. I'd put Dragon View probably in the top 200 for sure. Uh, I think it may have a legit... Even though I didn't enjoy the game and I didn't think it was good... I think it might even come in at like 150 or up. Uh, there's just so many games I haven't played and so many games I may have on a pedestal that aren't that good that I haven't played in 20 years, you know. That is also true. I I, I need to think of that consideration is. Now, can we move up on our rankings? Like, say how I have this is Super Putty, Roger Clemens, Dragon View. Because like, the way I'm going to look at it is Dragon View was an RPG game. Right. If we play another horrible RPG game later on, like when we go to do like a major ranking, say of like the top fifty that we've done, can I move up Dragon View over these other RPGs, or does it automatically move Dragon View down? I don't know. I think that uh, we may end up doing uh, every ten episodes. I think we may uh, have to reevaluate. Reevaluate. Uh, maybe maybe after ten episodes, we have to. Uh, debate our rankings on it uh we haven't thought this really through but maybe every 10 episodes we have to debate where we're at and admit where we think we're wrong but i do think that uh we will have a re-rank in there because uh 
uh, Dragon View came in as our first game, so it may not has been as critical. Like say, uh, uh, I'm just gonna hate it if you tell me that I play like uh, NBA Jam or like one of these games I got on a pedestal, and I absolutely hate it nowadays. That's gonna be devastating. Yeah, so, and that's me with my Mega Man games. Is I love Mega Man, so I mean I understand that they're hard, but Going back and playing them, I might think they're a hot piece of garbage. I think I think that every uh, ten games we're going to run, that we'll turn around and uh, at least evaluate our rankings. We may do a bonus episode uh, where we just talk about how bad the games on the bottom are and how good the ones on top are, and how mediocre the middle is, and if we had to re rank them, where we would put them. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. I, I like that idea. I well, I, I don't have. I, I guess to, to end on. Super Putty, uh, you know, it's definitely a uh, unique game. Uh, it's different. It is mildly fun. It's it's not a bad game. It does have its flaws. It's not for everybody. It is an Amiga game. Uh, so you kind of get, you know, even though it was released in i3, I feel like it, it may be a little dated for today's age. Uh, maybe dated when it was on the Super Nintendo. Uh, but definitely not the worst game I've ever played. No, definitely not the worst game so far that we've played. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it just because of the competitiveness of it because that brings out some uh, nonchalance for me and some nostalgia and all that good stuff. It, it was always fun for me to be competitive with a house full of kids and all that at my dad's pa- at my dad's place. And uh, the only thing I got to say about Super Putty is, Meh. I want to know what the cat said. That's what I really want to know. Well, hey, you got to think of it. You know, we played Dragon View. We didn't see a dragon. Uh, you play Super Putty. You definitely see Putty. So you do that. see Putty. So uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and end on that note. I don't have anything else to add. Uh, Super Putty is a okay game is where I, I leave it at. Super Putty's the best. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I, I guess that's all we got. So uh, we're going to come to you with our fourth game that we're going to draw tonight. And uh, we'll just see you then. All right. This is Arden signing out. See you guys.